Well, good morning. We are in Mena, Arkansas right now. We are headed to Poto Mountain and we're going to cross that range right there and then come back south and head back towards 71. And we always top the fuel tank up so there's no surprises. And as we were coming back to the vehicle, I actually said, I see snow. So we both looked in the headlights and sure enough there's little bitty flakes nothing major you can't hardly see it unless you're really looking but it is there but we're waiting for daylight but we still have 39 minutes to go so hopefully by the time we get to our turnoff it'll be getting daylight the sun should be peeping up over the horizon so we'll see you there as you can see, we're on Poto Mountain Road. We made a left off of Highway 71, and the gravel begins here. This first part has private property on both sides of the road, so we're gonna get past that before I put the action camera up. First part of the trail. Now if you go back south just a tad and go left off of 71, you'll hit our other route that is already mapped. And should be up on Onyx before long. We have made this route in the past. In fact, uh, Ashley ended up spraining her ankle and this road was pretty rough on her. What's it look like here? Straight. You got a map in front of you there. Where's the blue dot? We still fall on it. The yellow. Yellow. Once we get out of this area with homes, I'll set up the other camera so I don't have to hold this up and it'd be all shaky. We're gonna go across Poto Mountain, head west toward Oklahoma. place to pull over and get our camera set up. But this is the way we came from. That way's going east. But 
but we'll be heading west back up that way and I'm fixing to set the action camera up Been on the trail long and we're now in there in the national forest boundary 158 wheeled motorized restriction area only use roads and trails shown on official maps and this is one of them so we're going to continue on. This is the first stop that's on this route. Beautiful look over or look out. have a picnic table, a fire ring, and we're going to continue up the road that way. I did want to make a note that I do have AT&T cell service, and right here at this particular time I have good service. Welcome to the Poto Mountain Rustic Road Auto Tour. You want to set aside about half a day to travel this backwoods ridgeline route. It covers nearly 22 miles of some of the most beautiful forest land in Arkansas. Learn about some of the folks who traveled these mountains before you and enjoy the breathtaking views and bask in the solitude that only nature can provide. Pack a picnic lunch and explore one or more of the five stops along the way. The route travels along Forest Road 158, a dirt road that can be a little rough during extreme weather conditions. Although sedans can usually negotiate the road, trucks or high clearance vehicles are recommended. All intersections are clearly marked, just follow the auto tour signs. Obtain a sense of the height of Poto Mountain above the surrounding countryside from the many scenic overlooks along the way. You may view Stringer Lake, the Forche Mountain Range, and Round Mountain with its lush forest-covered dome. West of Dobb Springs, travelers can view Lake Hinkle on the far side of Walker Mountain. Now just sit back and enjoy the rustic beauty of Poto Mountain. You're going to have a river valley overlook and this is the first stop the way that we came from Waldron north on highway 71 for about six miles to Forest Road 158 and then you're going to travel west and it's going to be about 3.1 miles to the river valley overlook. The Poto River Valley has a long history of providing for the needs of the people. Once the hunting grounds of the Osage Indian tribe, the valley later hosted the villages of the Quapaw and Canong Indian tribes. The sales exploration of Arkansas in the 1600s brought French trappers and hunters to take advantage of the abundant wildlife and the trading opportunities with the local tribes. The name Poto is believed to have come from a French word meaning trading post. The area may have been named for the post that the French traders drove into the bank of the Poteau River onto which they would tie their pyro or a canoe hollowed out of a log. In the 1800s, the land to the north of the Poteau Mountain became more populated. 
Some settlers moved south into the Poto River Valley in search of elbow room. The valley provided grazing for livestock, wood for shelter and warmth, and a year-round water supply. The settlers would eventually displace the Native Americans who would move further west into what is now Oklahoma. Second stop is going to be Lookout Gap from the overlook at the first stop You'll continue west on Forest Road 158 for about 2.5 miles. Look to the north of the old rail bed that crosses Forest Road 158, the road you are traveling on. The route was first used by Indians as a footpath over the mountain. Later, settlers and traders used it as a major route from Texas, Canada to Fort Smith. Close your eyes and imagine the sights and sounds from teams of horses straining to pull iron-wheeled wagons up the steep and rocky trail. Although the quickest route from Mansfield to Hahn, this trail was not necessarily the easiest. Weary travelers may have rested here after making the slow, hard climb. However, they would have to remain alert for the surrounding landscape provided a perfect setting for an ambush. Place yourself in a cramped wagon, tired, thirsty, covered with dust, and needing to stretch your legs. However, news of the recent shootings makes you hurry on your way. Bank robbers, including the legendary Bell Star, were rumored to have frequently traveled this route over the mountain. Third stop is Dobbs Spring. From the previous stop, you're going to continue west on Forest Road 158 for about two miles. On the north side of the road, you can find the remains of Dobbs Springs. The rock structure you see may have been built to help pull the water. Travelers probably used the spring as a rest area. Settlers once lived on this mountain and farmed the area, watering crops and orchard from this spring. Why did people settle and farm this mountaintop instead of the fertile valleys below? Imagine some of the tales these stones could tell. The number four stop is going to be Buffalo Wallow. You're going to continue west from the previous stop on Force Road 158 for another 2.1 miles. Buffalo Wallow will be on the north side of the road. This is not a natural location for a pond, so why is a pond here? There's no record of how the original pond was formed, but most likely it was built to water and range cattle. In the 1950s, the Arkansas Cattlemen's Association funded the enlargement of the pond by the Forest Service. Today, the area is no longer used for livestock grazing. The pond is now a source of water for wildlife. Today, partnerships are common on national forest lands. Though these cooperative efforts Many facilities are now available to the public. Many groups and individuals are helping build and maintain trails, reconstruct and rehabilitate old buildings, staff the information stations, and help with habitat improvement projects for wildlife. Number five is going to be Bates Electric Site or Fire Lookout. From the pond at the previous stop, you're going to continue west on Forest Road 158 for about 5.5 miles. Turn north onto Forest Road 158A. Travel a short distance to the top of the ridge. The high elevations have always been important landscape features for people, whether it be to spot an approaching war party, to detect a fire, send a message, or just a place to sit and get a different perspective. At 2,665 feet, the fire tire location on Poto Mountain is no exception. In the mid-1900s, the Civilian Conservation Corps built a 45-foot wooden fire tire on top of this mountain to help in early forest fire detection. With advancements in technology, fire detection has shifted from using lookout tires to using airplanes. Today, all that's left of the old fire tire is part of its foundation. The site is now copied by several communication towers, supporting systems for various groups, including law enforcement, emergency organizations. Interesting, one of the towers can provide service for cellular telephones in the area. 
Persons with cellular phones have become the best early warning detectors of fire and other emergencies in the some areas. Fire detection will continue to be a function of Poto Mountain. The Wachita National Forest is an extraordinary place to visit, and this drive highlights just a few of its many treasures. You have experienced the rolling beauty of the forests and mountains, glimpsed into the history of the mountains' pioneers, and marveled at the many vistas. All of this has been brought to you through the combined efforts of the USDA Forest Service and the support of volunteers and partnerships. The land belongs to the public, so while visiting your national forest, please remember to be a good woodsman. If you pack it in, pack it out. Stay tuned for the rest of these videos to finish our drive across Poto Mountain Range. This route is now almost completely live on the Onyx Off-Road app. Ending track one on the Poto route, Poto Mountain route, right here. This goes down an ATV trail. From what I saw on the Forest Service mount maps, is closed to vehicles. Double check me on that. Little pull off right here. Road's pretty rough. Bumpy wise, we just came up from that end. And we are continuing on west. And here's a sign for that trail. ATVs, bicycles, horses, hiking, and it is a dead end. Thank you. 